all right guys welcome to another episode of the para axe let lens felt series and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at binding in svelte the first one we're going to look at is two-way binding a input so let's have this example i have an input here this is going to be a simple input and in here we'll have a state i'll call this name is equals to dollar sign state this will be an empty string now let's actually run this code to see the way this looks and yeah there's an input somewhere here <laughs> all right because we're using tailwind that's why the borders are not visible but this is the input and what i also want right here is to display the name i have an h1 my name is then i would render the name right here now let's take a look at this so we have my name is and the effect i want is when i type on the input i want it to update my name now do i do that well in Svelte, it's very easy i can easily just come up here and bind to the input value and what do i want to bind what state do i want to bind to this i want to bind the name states and if i save this would we'll have right here an empty input and also my name is empty when i write my name as you can see as i type it updates the name isn't that cool very nice so and the reason why we call it two-way binding and not one way is because of as the input updates the name the name can also update the input so if i write a name here for was for example save this you'd see that the defaults for the inputs is for was as for the name as well and if i add another input let's say a different input probably on that year that also updates the name it would not just update the name as well it also updates the value of the input that's why it's so we binding and if i come here i have let me save that first off you'll notice that we're going to have two inputs now we have this one here and this is a terrible example because you guys can actually see the inputs properly but we have one here <laughs> And we have one here and if i change this one here it changes those ones there as well if i change this one as well it updates everyone as well and that's why it's called two-way binding because of the state of this input input of this the state as well so now that's a simple example for an input now let's take a look at a more interesting example so what i'm going to do is have two states here that's going to say a and b and these terms they are not going to be strings they are going to be numbers so there'll be zero no you know what a should be 10 and b should be 5 and on this rendering i'll just say very simple i want to lock down the calculation here yeah, it should be a minus b like, very simple and we'll have two inputs as well this time we're going to instead of binding to um name would bind the first one will bind to a and the second one will bind to b i noticed that this actually has an error right here and the type of this would now be number since we are dealing with numbers now copy this and paste this here as well now save this all right let's go back to the browser and take a look at what we have now again we have these two inputs here this one and this one and the calculation that we are doing is a minus b right and the answer we get is five and that's correct but what if we actually made this six you can see as i updated the input the calculation we ran and it actually gave us the correct because on a 10 minus zero is zero and 10 minus six would be four so if i place six in here you saw four and if I place like 100 or something, you see minus 90. Because that is actually the correct answer. And as you can see, we can actually just bind directly. And actually have um, computations happening. And it still works. So that's why two-way bindings are very, very cool. And in cells, you can bind to pretty much all types of um, inputs or anything that can be updated. You can bind to it. So let's give another example of a checkbox this time. So this will be type of checkbox. I'll get rid of this 
and above one state and that state is going to be um is checked and this since it's binding to a checkbox is going to be a boolean value whether true or false by default i want this to be false and i'll bind this time it's not bind the value it will be bind check Bind checked would be equals to is checked and this name and doesn't we don't really need this name and ID and I'll just render the value whether true or false by default you see false and when I click on this checkbox it turns to true and then when I only click it it turns to false and just that same way we can bind to radio buttons we can bind to select drop downs multiple select drop downs we can do really complicated bindings we can even bind to components combine to different types of components not just inputs combine to different types of value and the short hand also works in the scenario as well so when it comes to um binding you can also bind to a short hand so if i instead of naming this is checked i name this this same name which is checked copy this and i name this variable checked i don't actually need to put in here like and bind checked is equals to checked. This would work. Yeah, if I save this, it's still gonna have the same effect. But since they're actually the same name, I don't actually have to go through that stress. I could just directly, as you can see, when I save this, right? Um, I was it probably prettier did the magic for me. So it, this was redundant doing this. It make any sense since we can just do this with felt shorthand, and it will still work. So that's basically how binding works. If you want a more advanced and in-depth tutorial on binding, you can let me know in the comment section. But that's all from me for now. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.